like the mighty mountains that surround them, the Renari people are like geology, ever-changing, slowly, methodically, sometimes unexpectedly. Tragedy brings the great movement of people, but it also brings the magnificence of the mountains. And the people of the Renari tribe, just like their homes that pockmark and line the mountains, are pockmarked and lined by the cultural trappings of the Taiwanese, the Chinese, and the Japanese, and most recently, the American and European missionaries that have come through this area and have inextricably influenced their life, their food, and their culture. Coffee is a very popular drink here in the Rinaldi tribe. You would think that it's been here for many, many years, but that's actually not the case. It wasn't until the Japanese colonization of Taiwan ended that, they, that coffee began to be grown here in the Renali tribe. This is yet another example of outside influence here in the Renali tribe. Because uh, when during the uh, World War II era where Jap Japan come over to take over, ta uh, control Taiwan a little bit, they bring coffee. As these two Renali locals explain, coffee is an inextricable part of the diet. And as was previously explained, introduced by the Japanese. This raises the next question. How have other parts of Renali food culture been influenced by the Japanese? We begin to unpack this question by talking to Li Jinlong, a local activities director and restaurant owner here in the Renali. Thank you so much for letting us interview you. I want to ask you, how long have you been working in Renari? I was a cadre of one of the communities that was rebuilt after the disaster. I also invested in the post-reconstruction work up until later industrial development. What influence did the Japanese have on Taiwan? What are some examples of influence on the Renari? My own opinion is that the Japanese came to Taiwan and our elders will take on Japanese names. When the national government came to Taiwan, we took Chinese names. This is more or less the case. The Japanese were very strict before, and they made many changes here. We are the Rukai people in Taiwan. There used to be something called an indoor funeral, and after someone passes, one would put the family's bodies under the house where we live. This is the previous custom for the burying. In the past, we were Lukai, and it was a Guiguo relationship with Taiwan. They went out to find each other and cut their heads. After the Japanese came, they banned our habit of headhunting. The place we chose to live. They changed the flow of the waterways. They built a big bungalow. In the past, cars could also be driven to us, paramedics and hospitals. This is also like the Japanese, and some constructions like this have been done. We originally thought we would contact the restaurant owner. We have questions pertaining to food. I also opened a restaurant myself, and I also clean dishes. The earliest specialized restaurant in Renari is me, we, one that I opened. So I also make food. And on our, our street is another restaurant opened by young people who have returned home. Do you have any special influences from other countries? Still, we, we have recently had Iberian, American and European influences. The cultural cuisine is called Iberian. We consider these countries' cuisines very important. And then there are some that I just said our own cultural cuisines are defeated. On our search to understand the Japanese influence on the Renali, we came across this painting showcasing an animal skull, and above it, the American flag and Japanese flag. To understand the importance and symbolism of this painting, as well as how the Japanese influenced other aspects of art culture in the Renali, we will now interview local Renali artist, Kemalasai Jakvalid. That is not what we painted. It was painted by friends. That is us. Some of the works are co-authored. We have 12 people who worked on it. In fact, Wu Ida Kanjing is another artist. It was something he wanted to present. It is part of the painting. So listen to his explanation, what it represents, and where its meaning can be found. You go see our tribes. Our art is the result of some dissatisfied practices from government agencies and from the past to the present. 
After the Japanese occupation, do you know what impact they have on the Taiwanese Aborigines? Especially in that art or other aspects of culture such as crafts. Actually, it has an impact, and I think the impact is great. For example, in the past, every tribe had a leader. This is our Tomu. According to the times, the Japanese education method did not allow another leader other than a Japanese. Because we used to call our tribes a country, a country. In the Taiwanese tribe, I am a Paiwan person. I am a native of Paiwan, and I am the leader of the Paiwan state. Then I told the Japanese, I am the leader, you are not. You are a foreign person. These door panels, window panels, these carvings, all burn. The Japanese are burning all of these things. The tokens in you, for example, are totems. I don't know if you have heard of totems. Only Paiwan and Rukai have such things, more traditional things. Then the Japanese don't want us to have this kind of thing. Because they think that we have these things, they feel that our strength and spirit seem to come from these traditions. This inspires our anti-Japanese thoughts. In fact, in the tribe, it is actually a peace-loving tribe. It does not fight. It's best to make big things, small things. The little things are gone. So, in fact, after the Japanese came to the tribe, the tribe ran wherever it could go. There are many of these tribes now at the foot of the mountains, all of which were taken down in the Japanese occupation era. Later, in fact, after the Japanese arrived at the Yanxiang tribe, there were many influences on the tribal life. For example, in the era of Japanese occupation, they have introduced a lot of ironware. Iron, such as a knife, can make iron for a knife. The iron of the tool can be manufactured. Then there is cloth. These cloths, there are so many kinds of cloth coming into Taiwan and entering the tribe. Even at that time, as they did not destroy all the traditional things in the tribe, these items. Some of them are also very clever. That is, they took very important things in these tribes. They confiscated them. They took them to the National Museum and collected them. Personal collections are also available. Going to the museum, I will see some of our traditional things in the museum over there. At that time, in fact, many things were taken away like this. Industrial technology, there are many technologies and some needs in life. They were always brought to each tribe. The tribe learned to make something more advanced. For example, we only had one kind of tool originally. When the Japanese came, they brought in a lot of new tools. It became five things, five tools. A tool takes five or six hours to make, and five tools can complete a task in about 30 minutes. That is a good aspect of Japan. In fact, we have asked a lot of elderly people who think that the Japanese are not bad. They also always think that they should cater to them. In fact, if they cater to the Japanese in Taiwan, it became like this. It is because they say that their past education is in Japan. Like my father is an example. He is a father brought up through Japanese education. Our interview with the artist raises questions about how the Japanese influenced the Renali through education. For this, we take our discussion to none other than the principal of the elementary school himself. Clothing started to become commercialized. Everyone, not just the top of the social strata, began doing it. There is a relatively large influence on the KMT from Japan in regards to the education system. After the Japanese came, they mandated that everyone has the same teaching curriculum. During Japanese occupation, the Japanese tended to belittle the natives and force them to learn Japanese. When the KMT came in, they enforced learning Mandarin. I am personally Hoklo, so my native language is Minran. For me, when I was in school, I spoke Mandarin, but when I went home, I spoke Minran. Systems that force individuals to learn a second language while abandoning their native language is what causes your native culture to decline. When you go back home, how can you not speak your mother tongue? The Japanese did not eliminate the caste system. A lot of the way they changed the culture was through intermarriage. The expectation was to raise them as Japanese. Because the Japanese benefited from this caste system, they did not dismantle it.
Inari people continue to be fascinating, and I return to the analogy of the geologist observing these mountains. Change is elemental. It is incremental. Over time, elements clash. Elements disrupt each other. Elements fuse, and they create a beautiful scenery behind us. Change is unforgivingly uh, elemental. It is perpetually around us and forever within us. This change is evident in the curvaceous slopes of the Pintung Mountains, hewn over the agonizing pace of millions of years. The people that inhabit these very heights are in their own right sedimentary constructs of tragedy, tradition, occupation, and jubilant emancipation. And those constructs are best observed through the perspective of those who continue to live and persist in them every day, from the eyes of the school principal who attempts to captain his students through the straits of modernity and tradition, to the cook who struggles to maintain and manage the village palate. All of these characters endure in the mundaneness of their daily lives, despite the small tremors of chaos incurred by unseen and delicate changes to their food, their language, and their families. The story of the Renari is one told many times over and is revelatory of a choice that we all ultimately face. Do we embrace change at the expense of traditions organically developed over the ages, or do we do away with the old and seemingly, ostensibly, obsolete? Is innovation, is new cultural tectonic shifting something that we should be excited for? Or should it be something that we encounter conservatively? Should it be something that we are afraid of and that we attempt to delay? That's a question that we ask the Renari people. And you've heard their answer. But whatever it is, whatever it becomes, it will very much be like the valley that surrounds us.